Well, first of all, I, I count it such a privilege and a blessing to be able to share on a Sunday morning in a, in a church. This is one of the longings of my heart because I feel very strongly that more people need to understand what is happening in the world, how God is reaching the nations around the world and reaching the nations right here among us. Now, before I share, I'm going to share some stories about some of the, uh, the work among refugees here in the Turlock area, share some scriptures. But before that, I want to just share for a few minutes a little bit about our past, our journey, uh, how we've been involved in reaching nations around the world. Um, I'm from, I'm from, this, uh, I'm from this, this town. I grew up here, graduated from Cal State Stanislaus. From an early age, I had a desire to be involved in reaching the nations because of the church I went to. I had, it was really emphasis on missions, and a lot of my relatives on both sides of my family were involved either as pastors or mission workers around the world. And so I had a real heart from an early age. So uh, after graduating from college, I went to a one-year Bible co college in, in, in uh, Portland, and then I went, ended up down in Southern California taking the first perspectives course on the world Christian movement, uh, the perspectives. And uh, from that time, I got a call to go to India. It was a short-term trip to India for six months from that time in 1983. Uh, in 1981, I came back and I prepared to go long term. And in 83, I went and started to go long term with an organization that did church planting among Muslims. And so uh, we went to India for, I mean, another single guy I went to India for like six months. Couldn't stay longer, so we ended up in Pakistan, Karachi, Pakistan. And for the first year or so, we just took about a year or so. We didn't even know who we were going to be working with, what people group, what, what tribe we were going to work with. It took us about a year before we decided on. The Baluch people, the Baluch are a people of about 10 million people, most living in Pakistan, about a, one and a quarter live in Iran, and about a half a million live in Afghanistan. They made up of about 70 different tribes and many sub-tribes, three main dialects. Anyway, we started working with them after about a year. And uh, so we, you know, over the years, we, we, we started uh, seeing some fruit. There was a real pioneer effort. There was hardly anybody working among them. And... They seem to be very open, more open to the gospel than some of the other groups in Pakistan. Well, to make a long story short, we did have a, you know, a couple of people who were interested and became followers of Jesus, disciples. And, and there was one young man that, that came from a village, and we got to know him and spent a lot of time, and he eventually became a follower of Jesus. And, and uh, I gave him, uh, his, I gave him uh, his first Bible, he would say, and then eventually... He became a, a, a believer, and we helped disciple him. We had a few believers that came, but then in, in, in 1995, after 12 years of being in Pakistan, actually six years I was single, and my, my wife from Germany came out and, and checked things out and uh, uh, wanted to get involved in missions anyway. To make a long story short, we ended up uh, getting married to her after waiting 14 months and writing her. So she came out to Pakistan, joined our organization, and so for, I was six years single and six, six years married in, in Pakistan. But in 1995, we were asked uh, politely to leave the country because they said, I was talking about Baptist, they said we were, we were uh, forcing people to be baptized. Well, I know that story wasn't true. I didn't baptize anybody. But we trained others to do baptism, but we didn't do any of it. So we knew it was a lie. And, and so anyway, we had a, doing some business there as well. And they, they wouldn't renew our business visa. Anyway, we went to, had to come home. And I was desperate. I was, I was so upset that I had to come back to America. And I know most people around the world want to come to America. They say, oh, it's the land of, it's a paradise and this and that. But I was miserable. I was here for two years from 1995 to 1997 because our job was not finished. We didn't ha have an indigenous fellowship among the Baluch people that we worked with. There were a handful of believers that we didn't have enough elders where they could start their own church in their own language and their own culture. And so I figured... I thought, our job is not done. And I had such an apostolic anointing, a calling to be, see the church established among these people in Pakistan. It wasn't finished. But then there was another mission, or, mission a person from, from Pakistan that heard about our, our situation that I was willing to even change my name and get back to Pakistan after being, having to leave. He said, oh, you can work with the Bush people. You need to come to the island of Cyprus and we'll train you for a couple years in mobilization. I said, mobilization? That means, he said, yeah, you can be in charge of the Baluch living in different countries and mobilize churches around the world and get people involved. And I said, 
well, I don't know, I can't get back to Pakistan, but maybe we'll do this. So we ended up in Cyprus. It was a tourist place, but we got trained. And they, one of the things they did, they trained us in the whole area of how to reach, uh, trying to get the, uh, the church mobilized to reach these people. And they said one of the best ways is to, is to train them and, uh, is, and, 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 and I mean, uh, get a prayer profile, get people, train people how to pray for them. And so we made prayer profiles of who they are, why they're unreached, and, and this. And then I began to start traveling the world and speaking in churches around the world advocating for the Bluch people because you know what what happens is if you don't know who these people are you're not going to pray for them and so it's it's uh so anyway I was I was I heard about someone in in, in uh, South Africa that was interested in the Bluch people so I I call, uh, called this lady I said hey could you gather some people I'll meet you in Quetta Pakistan I'll give you some training in strategic prayer and prayer walking, and we'll, we'll prayer walk around the streets in Quetta Pakistan, which is the center of Baluchistan and among the people we work with. Anyway, she did, and she got about eight people to go into Pakistan. I met them there for their first time. I trained them and, and, uh, and, and how to do prayer walking and stuff. And they, after about 10 days, we did this, and they were all excited, and they said, oh, wow, this is great. And I said, if you're so excited about this, what just happened, why don't you invite me to your churches in South Africa to come and speak? And they did. So they invited me to come, and they came from different parts of South Africa. So I came, and the first, the first night, it was, a, it was a small group of about a dozen people, and uh, I said, you probably never heard of the Bluch before, but Jesus said that, you know, my house should be a house of prayer for nations. And, and, and so I shared with them why they're, who they are, how they're needed, and I said, we're going to pray for them right now. And we prayed for those Bluch people, and afterwards, some lady said... Um, Tim, she said, while you were praying, while we were praying, I saw a picture in my mind. I saw a picture. I saw a stream coming from the north into the middle of Baluchistan. I saw, uh, as you begin to mobilize around South Africa, I see streams come every, from every direction. It's going to end up like a spiritual flood in the middle of Baluchistan. I, mean, I didn't know her from Adam, but I, do, I did come from a more of a charismatic church, and I thought, well, well who knows what's going to happen. So anyway, I did my job. I went around the, uh, South Africa getting people to sign up like weekly to pray for those Baluch people. Well, about two years later, two years later, two weeks later, I heard, I heard news from Pakistan from our former team leader, uh, and he was saying, hold on to your hats. You've got to hear this story. He said, this one young disciple that I gave the Bible to, he became a strong believer, had a burden for his family who lived in the middle of Baluchistan. And uh, not only that, he had a brother in 1990, this is 1998, who is, before 9-11, who was in Al-Qaeda training camp in Afghanistan for six months, and he almost actually killed the two of my American mission workers because they met with him and they tried to share the gospel. It didn't work out. They, 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 he didn't kill them. But anyway, they were trying to share the gospel, but he went to the Al-Qaeda training camp but they prayed and fasted for him. In the middle of the night, they, just, they, just, uh, uh, they heard that he, he escaped from this Al-Qaeda training camp, and he came to his own area in the middle of Bluchistan where they lived, and he was like the leader, the mullah of the whole area. Anyway, uh, his brother had a burden to go up and share the gospel with, with the family. So he took two of my colleagues, Americans, and they drove up from Karachi up to the middle of Bluchistan, and they shared the gospel with them. And when they knocked on the door, who came to the door? It was this former terrorist Actually, he helped behead somebody as well. He, former terrorist, came to the door and, and told his brother and then his two American friends, he says, I know why you're here. He said, Jesus spoke to me in a dream last night and told me three people are going to come to your door and they're going to share with you the way of salvation. And it was such a strong vision and a dream that he saw Jesus that he says, I know why you're here. Come on in. I want to hear what you have to say. He heard their story. He heard the salvation experience. He accepted Jesus that day, and he said, this is not enough. He called his brothers and sisters, about eight or nine brothers and sisters in, including his parents, and they, he shared the gospel with them. They all became followers of Jesus that day, and they all became baptized the next day. Then I realized this happened the exact same time that the people in South Africa were praying. And I realized that, wow, maybe God kicked me out of Pakistan for the purpose of mobilizing the church, advocating the church to get people to pray. And I believe since that time, the power of strategic praying and learning how to pray for nations. Nations means ta ethne. It means people groups. It means tribes. There are thousands around the world that still have never heard about Jesus. And the Bluch are one of them. I believe it was not a coincidence that the prayers of the saints helped bring that spiritual flood into Bluchstone that day. And the proof of the pudding was that this brother 
and his other brother, this terrorist guy and, and his brother, started moving in signs and wonders. They started moving around Pakistan, praying, seeing miracles, praying for rain to come during drought, praying for healings. And that was the beginning of a movement. And now we're seeing literally thousands of Muslims, not only among the Baluch tribe, but among many different tribes throughout Pakistan. And it spread to many other nations throughout Iran, Tajikistan. There are, I don't know how many thousands, but there are many, many followers of Jesus today as a result of uh, of these young brothers start moving in signs and wonders. I got hundreds of stories, but I only have a half an hour today, so I'm going to watching my time. Uh, but I want to get to the, to the main point of here, what we're doing locally among refugees. I, I say that, and I get excited because I, you know, when I get to, when we got together with these brothers and helping train them, I get together and they say, "Oh, Tim, you're you are." You're our spiritual father, you know. And it, it's just, it just, it, it, to have that point, we are doing pioneer work. We suffered. It was very difficult, you know, in those early days in Pakistan. And, and you know, when, when you're in a difficult country with, with a terrorist around us. But we, we, we plowed through and, and, we, and we began to see fruit and now we're seeing a lot of fruit. And we believe just in this situation now, we're in a pioneer situation here in Turlock. We've been back here for the last four and a half months after being moving five times internationally. As I said, we went to Cyprus for three years, then we ended up in Turkey for three years. Then we were in our international office for nine years in, 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 um, in England. And then we came back here uh, four and a half years ago because two of our kids were in university. And, and so we didn't know what we were going to be doing, but we started getting involved with the refugees. Before that, I wanna, this is, I'm supposed to be preaching, uh, so I'm teaching the Word, so I'm going to uh, share some Bible scriptures. But I want to share with you, the, the main theme of the Bible, this is important, the main theme of the Bible is the salvation of all people groups. Now, people groups or nation. Nations means, I think means people group, means tribe, nations. Um, the best summary of that verse would be what? John three sixteen. God loved the world so much. Not the world, not the, not the geography, the peoples of the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, of course. You know that story, that verse. But there's other verses I'll just quickly go through. God says, my name will be great among the nations, Malachi 1.11. God says, turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, Isaiah 45.22. Then you got the Abrahamic covenant, Genesis 12. Remember, God told Abraham, I will bless you so that you can be a blessing to the nations. Okay, the, Abraham was the father of the, of the Jews. He was told to... To, to bless the nations, all the different tribes, not just the, the Jewish people. The Jews were supposed to be a light to all the Gentile nations, Isaiah 49, 6. Psalm 67 says, may God bless us so that we can be a blessing to the nation. I'll read that. Verses four to, I'll read verses 5 to 7 in, in uh, Psalm 67. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvest. And God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us. And people all over the world will fear him. Did you know? I'm giving you a thread to the whole Bible, what God's main purpose is. Now I'm going to take you to the New Testament. John 20, 21. Jesus says, I am sending you, sending you with the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, 46 to 48. All nations will be preached to through the disciples. The disciples means the followers of Jesus. Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Matthew 28, the most famous, 18 to 20, it says, is the great and last commission. Go and make disciples of all the nations or people groups. That's the authority from Jesus given to his people. And then you got Acts 1, 8. God gave us power to reach the whole world. The start of the fulfillment of the task to evangelize and disciple all the people groups of the world. This is the beginning of the history of the church. It started as a prayer meeting. So this is one of the seven main commands. Of, there are seven main commands of Jesus, and the one main command is to go and get involved in reaching the nation somehow. Now the fulfillment of all this, it says in Revelation 5, 9, 7, 9, it says there will be at least one, from every, one person from every people group worshiping around the throne of God in heaven at the end of the age. So God's desire is that all people groups give him glory through worship. Did you know that missions exist because the worship of God does not exist in these thousands of, of people groups around the world? 
God gives his glory or presence of the Holy Spirit to receive glory. He gives his, his presence to receive glory through worship. Now, one of the methods, methods of reaching the nations is what I did. As I was kicked out of Pakistan, remember, I was put in the mobilization role. The mobilization role was mainly advocating getting people to become a house of prayer for nations. You know, that was way back in Isaiah 56, 6 and 7, where, where it says, my house will be a house of prayer for all nations. But what happened? Jesus quoted that, did you know, when he cleansed the temple. Remember he said, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations, but you've made it a den of robbers. What did he do? He got the whip. He was angry. He was angry. And you know, when he was doing that, the disciples remembered what was written in Psalm 69.9. It said, zeal for your house consumes me. Forget the jargon. What that means is it bothered Jesus very much. Zeal for your house consumes me. It bothered Jesus so much that the, the church, or the, well, the temple, the, the people of God, were making it a place of business instead of a house of prayer. And this is one thing I, th I see as I travel around the world. One thing is lacking. The church is not a house of prayer for nations. Yes, we have prayer. Yeah, most churches have prayer. But very few I take it to the next level, strategic type praying, and actually praying for people groups, praying for nations. And I have seen hundreds and hundreds of miracles as a result of taking, I've been all over the Muslim world, I've taken about 20 prayer teams into some dangerous areas, including my mission pastor, Ramon Avis, in our home church. We've gone into about eight different Muslim countries, and we see miracles before us because we are actually going and praying for the nations, praying against the powers on training people in spiritual warfare, that kind of strategic praying, learning to pray against the powers of darkness, and inviting the kingdom of God to come. In the Lord's Prayer, he says, your kingdom come. What does that mean? It means the presence of God. Is like, he told us to pray the presence of God to come. The presence of God. When the presence of God comes, what happens? There's, the, the, there's, there's conviction of sin, righteousness, judgment, signs, miracles. Okay, well, throughout Pakistan, throughout the Muslim world, there's thousands of people coming to faith, mainly through conviction of sin, through dreams, visions, miracles, healings. That's where the presence of God has come. And we are called to be houses of prayer, to bring that kingdom in. That's what it means to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. It is God's will. So, I'm going to stop right now and, and give you an example, okay? I'm going to pray right now. You, follow me as I lead just for a minute or two. I'm going to pray for the nation of Afghanistan and including 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. First of all, pray for those in authority. We need to be praying for religious leaders or political leaders, you know, the president and others. They need to have wise decisions. And so I'm going to just join me in prayer right now. You probably never had to do this in the middle of a sermon. God, I thank you for Afghanistan. I thank you for bringing over 200 Afghans here just in Turlock in the last couple of years. Well, Lord, I just pray especially you comfort the, um, these Afghans. As yesterday, about 100 Afghans were killed or wounded through suicide bombs in a military barracks. I pray you'd comfort those, those people who lost, who lost their lives and uh, the, the family members. I pray that you would encourage the wounded. We pray that this would be a wake-up call. They would come to know you. Send your spirits and dreams among them. I pray you give wisdom to the leaders of Afghanistan, wisdom to the military leaders, give wisdom to, to, uh, to um, uh, Trump and his cabinet and others as they make what, big decisions in dealing with some rogue countries around the world. Bless them, give them wisdom. May they seek out your face to bring peace in this nation, you know, the nations of the world. Amen. Well, that's just an example of how we need to be praying for nation. Now, nation, I, I meant that nation as a country, but, the, but the, uh, the, uh, the biblical word nation means people group. Like, for instance, in Pakistan, there's uh, maybe 50, 60 people groups. In India, a thousand different languages and, and dialects. Over a thousand people groups or tribes just in the country of India. So nation doesn't, nation doesn't mean country. Okay, just to get that clear. Um, God especially has a burden and a big heart for refugees, for strangers, for foreigners, immigrants, or nations. Leviticus 19.34 says, Any foreigner or immigrant who lives with you must be treated as they were one of your citizens. You must love them as yourself. You ever heard that before? Love your neighbor as yourself. That's Old Testament, Leviticus and God said in the New Testament that the two greatest commandments are to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. But who is our neighbor nowadays? 
Neighbor could be anybody. Neighbor could be our enemy. But in Matthew 5, 43 to 47, it says, you've heard it said, love your, those who love you. It says, love your enemies, even. Even terrorists. I could tell you other stories of terrorists who have come to faith. And these brothers are leading hundreds and hundreds of house churches and churches throughout Pakistan and the Muslim world. Become followers of Jesus. They don't even use the word Christian. They say followers of Jesus. Did you know that Abraham, Jacob, Moses, David, even Jesus were all refugees at one time? That's an, I, I could go throughout the, and study more about the, the Old Testament and New Testament. All throughout the Bible, there's, there's, there's refugees. Hebrews 13, 2 says, Do not forget to show hospitality. Well, hospitality literally means the love of strangers. Did you know that? Do not forget to show hospitality or, or the love of strangers to strangers. Uh, hospitality to strangers for by doing some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it now I told you our local situation now we've been here four and a half years the first year there wasn't very many refugees that came here in the Turlock area we were going to Lodi and Tracy there were a few refugees going in different areas but just in the last couple of years, as we are volunteers with IRC International Rescue Com- Commission started by Albert Einstein and World Relief in Modesto they are, the nations are coming among us. And it's interesting, about 90% of these 200 and some refugees that have come among us are from Afghanistan. You know, before I went to Pakistan, my number one heart's desire was to reach Afghan people. And it took, like, we've been doing this for, like, over 30, 30 years now, over 33 years. I come back to Turlock, and who do we reach? The Afghan people. God is my heart's desire. God is bringing the nations to us here in Turlock. I find that... Uh, a little bit funny. Great. I think it's a God's plan. But anyway, um, so our local situation, most of, like I said, most of them, most, they're mostly Muslims and most are Afghanis. There are a few Iranians, like here, even among uh, your congregation, we have Babak and Bania, who, is, uh, who are refugees. And I just want to give a quick story. Before I do that, I want to just say, we've, over these last few years, we've had Iranians, especially the most open Muslim country in the world, inside and outside of Iran, there are thousands of Muslims who become followers of Jesus. They just seem to be much more open than others. Anyway, we've had in our house a couple years ago, we started, every Friday we've had a fellowship or seekers from Iran, Muslims from Iran that came and would study Bible and we do how, like house church in our own home. Well, we've also had, just past Christmas, we had like three Afghan families who asked us, can we come to an, a Christmas service? So we had three Muslim families came to two different churches here in town and there's just a lot of openness. And we're curious. Some people say, hey, can, you, can I take a tour of the church? I want to see, you know, what's, what's going on. And, and so God is bringing the nations to us. Many are asking for New Testaments or Jesus films. You know, we've started a monthly program where we have a sports day at, a, at the other covenant church once a month. And we got like 60, 70 whole families come in the morning and have a sports day. But this past month, you know, it was Easter, so... We said, hey, we got to show part of the Jesus film. So we showed part of the Jesus film, you know, the, about the death and resurrection. And we had like 50 Afghans sitting there. They were just watching. And, and afterwards they say, wow, where we can see this whole, we'd like to see the whole film. Or, or we're interested. And our people have been asking us in the past for, for New Testaments and things like this. There's just a real openness among these refugees. After years of prayer and mobilization, like I said, a pioneer work, you don't see a lot of fruit for the first few years. The first few years, we hardly had any churches involved or laborers. We've been praying a lot recently in these years. And we're, now we're seeing like seven churches so far in Turlock who are partnering with us, including your church. That's why it's so exciting to see what's happening, including uh, your church and about six other churches are beginning to get involved in, in different ways in helping with the refugees. Because there's so much need to be done and so much openness. Now, I want to give, I gave, got permission from Babak to, ask, to say this, so, um, and the pastor, so he doesn't mind if I share. Uh, the pastor called me, your pastor called me a few months ago and said, hey, um, our church is beginning to be interested in, 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 uh, in reaching out to refugees, and just a day or two later, I got this phone call from someone, some refugee that just came to Turlock, and he says, can we meet? And and uh, but, but uh, Pastor Greg said, "Could you, Mr. Tim, could you please uh, go uh, check him out?" So I went to this hotel and, and met him and his son, and, and they were all getting ready to move. And I said, "What are you doing?" 
move. You just got here yesterday or whatever. I said, yeah, I walked the streets yesterday, Bobak said, and, and I found an apartment. I said, this doesn't happen. And he looked at me and said, mojiza. I said, I know what mojiza means in the language because I studied some of them. It means miracle. I said, oh, wow. I said, well, also, this is, this is interesting. And then he says, I'll go to the apartment. Can you take me to the apartment that he found? I took him there, and it was empty. And so I called Pastor Greg, and I said, listen, here's an example for your church to get involved. Come and see this, this new refugee's place. He has nothing, and you can come and make a list of, of, of things that he needs. And so Pastor Greg came and made a list, and within a couple days, uh, I brought some furniture that we had stored, and some, some, some stuff from your church was gathered. And so Bobak and Benia have been receiving stuff and have been a blessing over the, the weeks as he's been, been coming here. But I've been spending time with Bob again, and, and do, we're doing things together, and all of a sudden I said, this is not normal. Why is this happening? You got this done so quickly. You got his kid in the school and this and that. He looks at me and said, Mojiza, miracle. I said, and, uh, you know, I said, uh, you know, are you, yeah, what, what religion are you? So said, well, I'm sort of secular, I don't follow religion. But I said, he said, Jesus is, uh, he said, the, the light of God is here. I said, I told him, yeah, Jesus is the light of God and this and that. And he says, I'm reading the New Testament and this stuff and I've opened to go to church and he told, met with Greg and then they, he started coming to church with his son. So anyway, that's an example. You guys are involved and then we made a plea. There was another refugee that had a, came in and I told him, make a list. He made a whole list of things he needed. I sent it to Pastor Greg even when he was in Chicago and he came and the pastor, a few, uh, about a month ago, gave the list, and you guys uh, brought a lot of stuff, and so they were so happy. That's an example of partnering. And I'm going to give you some more examples later how you can partner. But this is just an example. Okay, a couple more things. Uh, after this sports day, you know, the one of the, well, was one, a widow, a widow, her husband was killed by the, by the extremist uh, Taliban in Afghanistan. She's got five kids. She's here. She's a real, real refugee. Anyway, because there's some that are ex, but anyway. She, I was at Citibank, and all of a sudden I saw her walking. She was limping with her teenage daughter who goes to Pittman High School. And I stopped, and I said, what are you, what are you doing? And I said, oh, my mom wants to go to the Wells Fargo Bank, and they lived on the west side. She had $9, $9. And I said, they said, Mr. Tim, do you think we can deposit $9 because my mom doesn't want to overdraw? I said, oh, that's not an issue, okay. I'll do, I took her to the Wells Fargo Bank, but I knew she was limping, and in fact, I took her to the doctor the day earlier, and I said, do you mind if I pray for you before you go into the bank? I said, no problem. So I prayed for this lady, this widow, and then I asked, how are you, how are you feeling afterwards? And they, she, said, she said she's feeling better. So I don't know if it's total healing, but it doesn't matter the point. And then I said, you know that Jesus did many miracles, and we pray in Jesus' name. They said, oh, yeah, we know in our holy book that Jesus did wonderful miracles and this and that. And I said, how would you like the Jesus film last week at the, the sports day we saw on Easter? And they said, oh, it's fantastic. We'd love to see the whole movie. Well, I opened up my glove box, pulled out a Jesus film in their language, and handed it to them because I just got it from a mission pastor the day before who ordered some from the church and, and had it ready. I said, Oh my gosh, this is, this is just, this is exciting things like this that we have going on. And then, you know, her son, we've been helping out, she had five kids, one of her sons, was, you know, I've been helping out, and, she, and he, he says, Mr. Tim, could I get a hug from you? He says, you remind me of my father, father who was killed by the, by the extremists. You know, these, these are the orphans and widows, there's desperation here, they're in such need. We have opportunities for partnership. The Lord is bringing the nations to us. You can get involved in, like, we have monthly prayer meetings. I have cards afterwards. I'll give you a card if you want to get more involved. We'll tell you more. Every month we have prayer meetings. We specifically pray for refugees, being house of prayer for nations. That's what we're doing. And we're seeing results. You can be involved in English conversation, donations of household furniture like some of you have been already doing could become financial partners. We need Bibles and Jesus films, this and that. We need personal funds we also need as a family. Uh, there's so many things you can do and get involved. You can come to the sports day and just be, just be a mingler. Mingle and see. People say, how can you do it? We are icebreakers. It's very hard for you. You don't know the do's and how you get involved. And uh, If I say the right thing to Muslims, you know, well, later on, if people are interested, the pastor's going to... Uh, said it's okay that the people who, if, if you're interested, we'll have another a training, do's and don'ts, and how to reach Muslims, cultural things, how to, to, to get involved, and what you shouldn't do. So, those of you who are interested, please let the pastor know 
uh, afterwards and let us know. But there's so many ways you can get involved. You can be drivers. You can help go to the classes we have with ling- uh, learning English. There's such a need in many different ways for you to... We are the ice breakers. Just come follow us. Be with us. Mingle with at the, the sports days. You get to know these people. And it's, it's exciting. In conclusion, Christ said that he would build his church. The church is the family or community of believers which are called out from all the world's people groups groups or nations. Habakkuk, Habakkuk 1 5 says, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed, for I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. William Carey, a famous missionary in the past, said, Expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. You know, I always like when I go around, I share, How can you do all these things? He says, Oh, yes, I can do. I can do all things through Christ. No. I can do all things. I mean, I, I, no, I can't do all things, but I can only do all things with Christ. You can do all things for Christ because God is in us. Christ is in us. We, we can move the mountains and not, you, oh God, you can move the mountains. We can move the mountains if we have a seed of some small faith. We have to have that, that uh, DNA that we have the authority. We can move mountains. We can extend the gospel in the nations. But you have to surrender yourself. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So, God's heart, again, is that people from all tribes and nations will worship him and that his kingdom comes to them. The kingdom of God, the presence of God, that's how we are to pray the Lord's Prayer. We hope and pray that many of you from this church will begin to partner with us in reaching these nations that are among us. God is bringing them to us. I can't even go back to Pakistan. It's so dangerous, these countries. But God is bringing the nations to us. It's an opportunity. They're much more open to the gospel. Remember, you can do all things through Christ. And if you partner with us, we as icebreakers, Brigitte and I, my wife, we will take you alongside and, and you will get involved. We need people to adopt. People you've already adopted like like Babak and Vinia, but there's so many others out there in need. So thank you for allowing me to share. Like I said, I, I have cards, you can, emails, and uh, phone. Call us and say, hey, I've got donations, or I can get involved in this and that. Help, and just call us, and we'll, we'll, we'll get together. Thank you very much.